What's up airplane collectors, welcome to a special model airplane review with your host Ray. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the NG model 1-400 scale model of the last 747 ever produced. In this video, I'll do a review of the model and at the end of the video, I'll give my personal opinion about what I think of the model and whether or not I recommend it to other collectors. This model is part of NG's new Ultimate Collection series. As such, it has special packaging and a display stand which I will show momentarily. That being said, let's start the review. The box is a high quality cardboard box which features a magnetic flap. I'll show what's underneath here momentarily. It's 19 centimeters lengthwise and heightwise and six and a half centimeters wide. I'll show you around the box now. So there's the front, it's the bottom, right side, top, left side, and here is the back side. So here is what's under the flap. Here you can see where the model sits inside of the box along with its other contents like the collector rewards program card and the stand. I'll show those momentarily. And under this flap is a history of the first flights, first deliveries, and last deliveries of every single 747 type. It's a pretty long list here. And there's also the logo of the flight path that the final 747 flew on her delivery flight right here. So lots of, lots of cool things down here. And under the flap, we have a thank you to the 747 team. There's even more, believe it or not. Here there is a forever incredible message right there. And then up here is another Atlas Air and Apex Logistics title. So lots of things everywhere on this box. As you can tell, they definitely went crazy with their ultimate collection program. So the presentation is pretty good. Now the real question is, does the model within live up to that presentation? We shall see. Included in the box is the model itself fully assembled, painted, and ready to display. And as you just saw my hand move in front of the camera, there's also the collector rewards program card right here. It's a nice shade of purple blue. And there is also the metal display stand. This metal display stand comes disassembled, so you need to assemble it. You need a screwdriver to screw the screw in here to get the stand itself into place. So this thing is made out of metal, and the part that goes into the aircraft here is too wide for the aircraft itself. I had to sand mine down in order to get it to fit, and if you sand it down too much, it's going to be loose and you're not going to have a good day. But here is what the model looks like on the stand. Let me just fit it on here for you really quick, and there you go. It's a pretty decent fit, assuming you sand it correctly or you do whatever you need to do to reduce the diameter of the stub. And it looks pretty good in my opinion. So if you want, you can get a stand from a different competitor. I don't see it as necessary unless you mess up your original stand, but the stand is decent. Here is the model itself. I'll give you a quick 360 before I start my review. Fuselage length is 18 and a half centimeters, wingspan is 17 centimeters, and it's five centimeters tall. Accurate to 1 to 400 scale and pretty big for a model. It's also pretty heavy because it is made out of die cast metal. I'll start up the review with the fuselage. The nose on this model is really good. Nose profile seems to be pretty accurate to the actual 7478F. Printed detail up here is very nicely done as well. It's consistent, it's very fine detailed. You can even read some of the text on there. I'll zoom in on that for you. So there you can see the text is very fine printed and it looks really good. Same with the aircraft details themselves. Solid job overall on painted and printed detail. The Apex Logistics title here looks pretty good. Now in terms of criticisms, the only thing I can really harp on about is the cockpit windows. This is one of the first releases from NG Model on their new 1-400 scale 7478 mold. An issue that collectors found was that the cockpit windows were a bit large or incorrect. And in my opinion, I do have to agree with them. They do seem to be a bit large and just something just seems off about them. It's probably the size. So if you think it looks fine, it's fine. But that is something that some collectors notice that the cockpit windows are a bit large. Let's move down the fuselage now to look at the rest of the details. There really isn't anything to mention or complain about. Everything looks really good aside from the cockpit windows. So solid job so far. 
Here's the vertical stabilizer. This looks pretty good as well. Shape is accurate. Rudder details are clearly defined, although they're a bit hard to see with the dark blue paint going on here. But they are clearly defined. There's nothing being filled in by paint. The Atlas logo looks really good. Color seems correct. No complaints up here on the vertical stabilizer. Let's go over the right side of the fuselage. Everything I've said about the left side can also be applied to the right side. The right side is a little bit different from the left side in that here there is an Atlas Air title instead of the Apex Logistics title I showed you earlier. And there's also this Joe Sutter logo right here. So those are the differences, but there is no loss in quality on this side either. Overall, pretty decent. Moving on to the wings on this model. The wings on this model are pretty good. They're very nicely detailed. Molded detail appears in the form of panel lines with the control surfaces. You can see them back here. None of them are filled in with paint, which is always nice to see. Some other model manufacturers have that issue, but this one doesn't. Printed detail looks good. It's just the overwing markings. And painted detail in the form of the reflective paint on the leading edges. Those look pretty good as well. And here are the wingtips. The wingtips are very nice, very sharp too, so watch your fingers if you're handling this thing. The undersides of the wings aren't as detailed, but they're still pretty nicely detailed. Here they actually differentiate between the leading edge slat colors here. It is a bit of a much, it's a much lighter gray than the rest of the wing, so that's pretty good. And on the fairings here, there's the red dots at the end. So overall the wings are very nicely detailed on this model. No complaints. Right from here I'll move on to the rear of the model. Here are the horizontal stabilizers. Here we get a bit more detail in regards to painted detail. We get multiple shades of reflective paint, which look pretty good. I'm not sure if that's 100% accurate. I'm pretty sure it is, but either way, it looks very nice. Paint application seems to be mostly consistent, so there's that too. APU looks nice as well. You can see it's clearly defined, nicely detailed. The paint doesn't appear to have gone on exactly aligned. As you can see, the APU exhaust hole is a bit off to the left side of the aircraft and the rest of the APU is more towards the right. So I'm not exactly sure what happened there. It's not perfect, but it's not a huge offense either. So I won't harp on about it too much. And here's the underside of the aircraft here. Is that a detail or is that, oh, sorry. No, that's just, that's just a piece of dust. I'm sorry. But everything back here seems to be pretty good as well. Let's move on to the engines. The engines are usually a strong talking point for me on models, but this one, it's not for the right reasons. So overall, the engines look really good. Now, uh oh, that's another thing I just noticed. So here you can kind of see the exhaust is a bit bent downwards. It should be pointed a bit further upwards. Details on the engine seems to be pretty good. Printed detail looks good. Shapes seem to be accurate as well. So that's very nice. Here's the underside of the engines. These look really good as well. And the fins are very nice. Whoa, those are actually really nicely detailed. And unfortunately though, they are glued in place. They do not spin, but you're not really supposed to be playing with them anyway. And the detail is pretty impressive. Now, the reason I wanted to discuss the engines here is take a look at the engine strakes right here. These little small things right here. So t take a moment to look at these on the left side and then compare them with the ones on the right side. One here and here. The engine strakes should be pointed towards the fuselage. On my model, one of the engines is not in the correct position. I got a right-sided engine on the left side. Moving on to aerial details, this model features antennas and that's really it. So there's this large antenna here at the front of the aircraft. This looks pretty good. But things also suffered here on the antennas department. Two of the antennas on my model were detached and pretty badly bent. I had a rough time trying to reattach them. This is one of them. This one was detached and bent. It wasn't fun to deal with. And these things are really small, so it's not easy to put them back in. And then here's this very small antenna back here. Thankfully, this one was okay. On the underside of the aircraft, it is definitely not, well, actually, it might be lacking in antennas, but there's only one down here. This is the other one that was messed up. I have attached it decently at best, but it was really annoying to have to fish this one out of the fuselage and reposition it correctly. While we're down here, something I'd like to point out is the contrasting gray colors here. You can see that the border between the gray and the white is separated by a distinct shade of gray that is different from the rest of the gray. I don't think this is accurate. And also you can see that some of the blue paint wasn't really fully applied 
and there's some areas of blue that are lighter than the actual blue that is on the fuselage. So a few inconsistencies with paint application as well. Now while we're down here, let's look at the details. Very nicely detailed, there's a giant Atlas Air title that looks really good. Landing gear on this model are actually really good. They're made out of rubber and they roll very smoothly. They're nicely detailed, so really there's nothing I can criticize. The gears are pretty good. Those are the main landing gears. They look pretty nice. Here is the nose landing gear. The nose landing gear is also very nice. It rolls smoothly and the wheels are made out of rubber. So at least NG redeems themselves a little bit here. Here's a view at the front of the aircraft. Wing flex looks good, engine clearance looks good. Cockpit window printing seems to be mostly symmetrical. Vertical stabilizer seems to be upright. Gear balance looks excellent. Overall, pretty good up here, no complaints. Now that's the end of my review. Time for my personal opinion and recommendation. So this model is decent. It's got its imperfections. Some of them are a bit more alarming than others. I was able to fix the ones that I was able to fix, but the one with the engine being incorrect, that one messed with me a bit. And it's very surprising to see from NG, since NG usually does not make this kind of mistake. And the paint imperfections, while they're imperfections and they happen in a lot of diecast models, still a little bit irritating to see. So yeah, this model isn't perfect, I didn't expect it to be, but it's it has issues that are not usual from NG, and they could have been better. So, that being said, I do recommend this model. It's very highly detailed, overall the details are very good, and it's pretty darn good for a 1-400 scale aircraft. Just quality control was a bit spotty with this one, so be careful. I do recommend it, but be careful and understand that there may be issues with it. Well, that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. And that's all I've got. Like, comment, and subscribe. Happy building. Happy collecting. Take care of yourselves. See you next time.